Good morning. Today we're looking at integration by change of variables or substitution, frequently called U substitution. U substitution is doing integration using the chain rule or the reverse of the chain rule. Recall the chain rule says the derivative of f is g of x is the derivative of f evaluated at g of x times g prime of x dx. So if u is g of x, then g u is d prime, g prime of x dx. So if we had something f of u of x times u prime of x dx, that would be the same as f of u du. In this section, we're going to look at several kinds of examples. The first ones are the ones that I will call baby u substitution because we see something that looks like f of ax plus b. And in order to set it up for the chain rule, we see we have ax plus b and its derivative is a dx. If we're going to multiply by an a on the inside, we have to divide by an a on the outside. And I now have f of u du and an easier integral to do that will match. Regular u substitution is the same idea except the u is a bit more complicated and we're looking at an indefinite integral. One of the warnings is I need to either be able to translate everything into sight into u and du or the substitution doesn't work. The third kind of problem we're going to look at is definite integrals because then I not only need to take care of the integrand, I also need to work about, worry about the limits. Now, when we see this, we recall that the integral from a to b is really the integral of x equals a to x equals b. And so when I change things to u, I have a choice of either changing my limits or I want to mark that I'm not changing my limits. So our translation table should include the endpoints and we need to be explicit about which variable we're using at which time. As I said, we're going to look at a bunch of the examples and if I look at the exercises at the end of the section, we'll see that the first eight problems are the ones for what I refer to as baby u substitution. That if I could just make 5x plus 3 into a variable, this is one of my rules variable to the fourth, but I need to change the dx as well. Again, 7x minus 9, x over 5 minus 2. These first eight problems are all problems where I have some linear term, and that's just going to be changing a constant. For the next four problems, we have problems where the thing we would like to substitute as u is more complicated. If it's quadratic, we need to have the correct linear term for du. Again, quadratic, the correct linear term. That happens with both 11 and 12. In problems 13, 14, 15, and 16, I have a definite integral and the linear term to substitute. In problems 17 and 18, I have definite integrals with a quadratic or cubic term to substitute. We're going to start with the first exercise in the section. That's, I want to find the integral of 5x plus 3 to the fourth power dx. I'm going to look at this and say it would be nice if u was 5x plus 3, then du is 5dx. I'd like to rewrite the problem so I can see du. I'm going to have the integral of 5x plus 3 to the fourth power, and I want this to be 5dx, so I have du here, but if I multiply by 5 on the inside, I'm going to divide by 5 on the outside. As you can see, we have this translation table that tells us how to translate everything. This becomes one-fifth, the integral of u to the fourth du, which is one-fifth times u to the fifth times one over five, power rule, plus c. Since my problem started in x, I want my problem to end in x. So I'm going to have 1 over 25 
5x plus 3 raised to the fifth power plus c. I'm going to look at problem 7 out of the exercises. And problem 7 is looking for the integral of 100 e to the minus 0.06t minus 5. Looking at this problem, this looks like a problem where I'm doing something with interest, having 6% interest, but have a different starting point. I'm going to do the same trick again. I'm going to let u equal minus 0.06t minus 5, and du is equal to minus 0.06 dt. I'd like to rewrite my problem as 1 over minus 0.06 times the integral of 100 e to the minus 0.06 t minus 5 times minus 0.06 uh, dt. I do my substitution 1 over minus 0 0.06. I'm going to put the 100 out front. I have the integral of e to the u du, which is 100 over minus 0 0.06 e to the u plus c. Since my problem started in x, I'm going to end it in x and make this equal to 100 over minus 0 0.06 e to the minus 0 0.06 t minus 5 plus c. Once again, I simply had to do the substitution. When I was looking, at doing my problem, I again build a translation table. I need an evalue, a way of evaluating u and a way of evaluating du. All I needed was to have a constant on the inside. To put that constant on the inside and multiply by a constant on the inside, I need to divide by the same constant on the outside. Sorry, let's look at problem 11. Problem 11 is the first case where we have a, one of the cases where we have a nonlinear term. I'm looking at the integral of 3x squared plus 1 over x cubed plus x plus 9 dx. I'd like u to equal x cubed plus x plus 9. Then du is 3x squared plus 1, all times dx. Looking at my integral, it becomes the integral of du over u, which is the natural logarithm of the absolute value of u, plus c. Once again, my answer started in x, so it should end in x. The natural logarithm of the absolute value of x cubed plus x plus 9 plus c. So these are the first two kinds of problems where we're looking at indefinite integrals. It's worthwhile looking at at least one example where substitution doesn't work. Suppose I'm looking at the integral of the square root of x cubed plus x squared plus 1 times 3x squared plus x dx. Now it's tempting to say let u equal x cubed plus x squared plus 1, then du is 3x squared plus 2x dx. And when we look at our problem, we almost have square root of u du. The problem is this is 3x squared plus x, and what we needed was 3x squared plus 2x. So our substitution fails.
it's worthwhile to take Wolfram Alpha and look at what happens if we try and actually do that integral. I can type it into Wolfram Alpha and Wolfram Alpha can integrate it. But when we look at the answer, that clearly is not something we want to be able to do within the scope of this class. So it's a problem that can be done by very advanced techniques beyond what would be normally done in a three semester sequence. What we're interested in though is simply saying it looked like we were going to do substitution and we almost had what we needed except I needed that to be 2x and I only had 1x. So unless I can do the complete substitution, substitution fails. I'm looking at problem number 16. I want the integral from 1 to 3 of 2x plus 5 to the minus 2 dx. My u is clearly going to be 2x plus 5. My du is 2dx, and so I'm going to set this up as 1 half the integral from 1 to 3, 2x plus 5 to the minus 2 times 2dx. I have my translation table here. And given my translation table, this is one-half the integral from x equal 1 to x equal 3 of u to the minus 2 du, which is one-half u to the minus 1, divide by minus 1, so minus, from x equal 1 to x equal 3. Before I can substitute, I need to plug back in minus one-half 2x plus 5 to the minus 1 from x equal 1 to x equal 3 minus one-half 11 to the minus 1 minus 7 to the minus 1. And so this problem, I didn't change the limits. I had to switch back to x in order to evaluate the limits. The other way to do the problem is to continue the translation table and say that if x equal 1, then u equals 7. And if x equals 3, then u equals 11. And I get the integral of 1 half from 7 to 11 u to the minus 2 du, which is minus 1 half u to the minus 1, evaluated from 7 to 11. And now, I, since everything's in u, I never have to change back to x, and I get the same answer. So definite integrals can be done either way with a smaller translation table or a larger translation table that also changes the limits of integration. Thank you.